we had to turn that money over to another charity. So I had to wait until we had final permits before addressing everyone. So we had no choice, and uh, I had to send the letter. It was a vote of the committee, and we went from there. I will thank the members of council who approached me after the fact offering their support. But at that point, it was too late. We had our due dates. We had, you know, we, we, couldn't, we had no choice. So, so anyway. Mike, um, you know, I, I think the reason I let you go longer is because I think this needs a, a thorough airing of what the issue was. So my, my own recollection is that a resolution was still listed on the agenda, but we never saw the resolution. I don't think we ever got a copy of it. So, so what, what occurred, Mayor, as, as does often, the, the city clerk um, attempted to draft the resolution. So Mr. Feely dropped off a letter requesting the resolution be prepared. Uh, Lynn Sweeney um, did a great job, and she put together a resolution. Um, but as always, she sent it to Fred Cerny to review uh, before you know, pre she presents it to council. Uh, Fred, in his review, says that that's you know, a good try, but that's not the resolution that needs to be done for, for this. And in fact, there's uh, some other things that need to be ironed out first. Uh, however, Fred was uh, on his way to Florida for a vacation. Um, I asked Fred, had about a 30-minute conversation with Fred about possibly doing the resolution with the caveat of contingent upon, you know, the execution of certain agreements or stipulations of certain agreements. Fred was not comfortable with it. Uh, at that point, I, I was not aware, I'll be honest, of a June 1st date. So I, I do want to correct one thing that Mike said. It, that June 1st deadline never came from me. Uh, and in fact, I was not aware of it. Uh, first time it appears, at least in, in in my understanding, is on his letter that he turned into Lynn Sweeney asking that this resolution be placed on the agenda. And it kind of contradicts itself because the, the meeting is June 6 and it says I need to be, meet this June 1st deadline. But at any rate, I did not impose that deadline. Uh, and in fact, the, the city of Brigantine did not oppose, in, impose that deadline. Um, that was something that, that apparently Mr. Feely you know, decided that was a threshold First. deadline for, for him. For, for, you know, I'm sure there's good reasons there, but I was not aware of it. Nonetheless, we, we made an attempt, the clerk's office made an attempt at doing the resolution to help Mr. Feely out. And that's the point I want to make, you know, very clear to counsel and to Mr. Feely and to the public, is that the city of Brigantine administration, the police department, uh, we made every attempt we could to accommodate this event and make it a success here in Brigantine. We want to see this. We, we want to encourage these type of events, but we have to be mindful that it is done correctly and, and that all of us are protected. The city of Brigantine is protected in how that event is, is held and run. Uh, that is clearly what Fred's concerns were with um, drafting a resolution. He wanted to make sure all the I's were dotted and the T's were crossed. And, I could not convince him otherwise. That's his job. That's what I respect about Fred. He, you know, he, he advises me, and, 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 and I go with that. That that's, was his advice. The police department, similar. I, I said, we, we, I count nine meetings since March that the police department met with the committee to, to finalize a plan, not just the, the ABC um, application and how, how alcohol is going to be distributed, although that's a very big part of, that, of it, but how the security of the site is going to be, how the site's going to run and operate. Public Works has met numerous times. So we made attempts, I think many, many attempts to work with the committee to, to get this event moving and get it off the ground. And again, my understanding was there's a August 19th deadline that was imposed by council to have all this stuff done. And I thought we were on, on target for that. And in fact, there's a letter that I received um, last week from um, Chief Reed that was sent to Chief Reed from the committee thanking the police department for, for working with them and figuring out how we're gonna um, 
handle the, the alcohol distribution on the site. I think there was a meeting the 22nd of May where they kind of ironed out the concerns that the chief had so that that, that portion, which seemed to be the biggest hurdle, could move forward. Um, so again, I, I want to emphasize that, that the clerk's office worked to, to help this event happen. Um, it just was not enough time uh, to get that resolution onto the council's agenda. And um, uh, I'm sorry that Mr. Feely decided to cancel the event, uh, but it, it is his decision. And really, you know, I, I think, I feel City Brigantine made every effort to, to accommodate. Mike, you made a comment too about um, funding of the event. Maybe, maybe I misunderstood. It, you had one donation of three thousand dollars is was that the extent of what the foundation had on hand at this particular time five thousand to a your own right well, well I we've, also we've spent about fifteen <coughs> fifteen eighteen hundred mike i i was also there i was talking to ed about the agenda coming up and he had a call from mr cerny he was in florida ed Talked to him for a half an hour. I thought he was very rude and leave me alone. But, <laughs> but uh, he talked to him for a half an hour and tried, and not to throw Mr. Cerny under the bus because he's our attorney and we have to listen to him and everything like that. But Ed tried to get a, a voice. And far as I was concerned, and I don't think anybody on council was concerned, we knew you were going to drink on the beach we, when we passed our resolution that night. And I told you that night out in the hallway with you and Marie, that we knew you were going to drink on the beach. And I said, keep going. I, I don't, there's nobody on council. You know, I don't want to speak for council. But we were under understanding that night that when we passed the resolution that I think the police department came up and says, hey, you have an ordinance against drinking on the beach. Okay, well, let Fred do his thing. And I'm sure everybody on council knew that. Uh, I was disappointed when you, you sent a letter on Tuesday when I, I came in here. I whispered in uh, uh, Vance's ear, uh, when's Fred coming back? Okay, Ed, can you meet with Mike and on Thursday with, with Fred and get this all ironed out? So I was disappointed when I, when I received the letter. And, and to, uh, you know, somebody's accusing me and the mayor of not wanting this thing. Well, out of all the council people up here, we're the biggest beer drinkers here, so you know. And I'm, I'm not sure you. I'm not sure you can hold that title. Yeah, but but, okay. uh, but uh, craft beer. So uh, I I was very supportive of it. Uh, I know the mayor. When I talked to him, he reached out for you, and you you said, "Don't you know? Forget it. There's nothing you can do." Uh, talked to. We actually had our committee meeting that night. Actually talked to Rip. You know, Mr. Reynolds or whatever you want to call him tonight, but uh, he was he was shocked too. He just didn't understand because he he books acts a week in advance. He told us and all that stuff. So, um, so there was nobody on this council, no matter if it was Democrat, Republican, or whoever, didn't want this thing to go through. And I had you had my total support, and I know you had the mayors and, and I, the rest of this council. I believe that council. Uh, for the most part, had the support behind it. And I certainly respect Mr. Cerny, and I understand about we, we uh, met, his we, taking yeah, we, the vacation we met, we in met, Florida. Me and the mayor met with you yes, and the we committee. Have. You know, okay. we talked about the chief and, you know, whatever the chief's decision was. That was the chief's decision. We, we weren't going to go talk to him or anything like that. You know, it was about two drinks or whatever the case may be. But I understand. I think you guys all worked that out, and we're going in the right direction. I just, I didn't understand that two days was going to be a critical thing there. I know you were talking about June 1st uh, later on when I talked to you. Yeah, in fact, that. if you remember, Andy, we yeah. talked about in that meeting, and you said, what is the drop dead date? Right. And I said June 1st. Right. Do you yeah. remember? Uh, I'd be honest with you, no, but if you, if you okay. did say that, I, I, I yeah. believe you. And, uh, yeah. you know, I, I didn't understand why we were still talking about it until I found out there was a, um, no ordinance on the beach that we had to clean up. It was just, you know, something that Fred had made up, and you know, yep. there was no doubt you were going to get 
drinking on the beach, because we all at this body here. But my surprises came from this. One, I did not receive a call from anyone in the city administration on Friday saying it's not going to happen, okay? And if it wasn't, if I hadn't run into the city clerk that night, and then again, I had a conversation saying that it was, you know, from, again, that it was Mike, going to it, take it, place. It, Michael, it, it, it's still, you know, I hate to use the words assumption, but we all assumed that we knew we were giving you permission to drink on the beach that night. We just had to, had to clean it up. That's okay. All. Well, but I, I do want to say there were some questions and concerns that we had in dealing with the police department. We continually had a moving target, and that concerned me, and it's concerned the rest of our group. And I'm not going to get into the one beer versus two beer. I can understand why the chief was scared to get involved in that, okay? But when we started with this in our original meetings and we started talking about doing one officer and five specials, then it came out that it was going to be two officers because Sergeant, the ABC uh, representative was going to be included as well. And if you remember, I was up front at the beginning that we were going to reimburse the city for all expenses. That's correct. Okay, that was perhaps a mistake on my part. Okay, maybe I should have made the, uh, the city a little bit more of an invested partner in, the, in this event. But then when they said, no, we can't use specials, we have to use rank and file officers. And I was told by the chief that it was part of the union contract. Well, Andy, I'm like you, I do my due diligence. Pulled a copy of the contract, reviewed it with the city clerk. No such language, called the PBA president, Rich De Leon. He says, no, there's nothing like that in the contract. They use specials all the time. I mean, that was a dance. I don't like moving targets. I like to work with people where things are straight in front. Okay? So I had concerns. Those were communicated. And, uh, you, know, you know, rest assured, I didn't want to come up here and speak tonight. Right. For me, it's done. Okay? Right. It's done. Right. So let it go. You know, those of you that supported this, I appreciate it. It was a labor of love. It's not going to happen. Okay? Thank, Thank you. you Thank you, Mike. Um, Any other public comments? Mr. Pucci. Can we go past the public John Pucci, 100 Sheridan Square. Um, I just wanted to say it was a great event. The uh, Flag Day ceremony at the Elks on Saturday, uh, Councilwoman View could probably expand on that. She was there, but it was a great event. Um, I, I know this council has been very busy since organization. Everybody's been doing a lot of work and you've been uh, accomplishing a lot of success. I would ask that, hey, you get a little extra time somewhere. Uh, there, there's uh, numerous corrections that need to be done on the website. Uh, there's some things on there that are outdated. There are some members this year have been appointed to committees. Their names aren't on those committee lists of the website. So maybe somebody, we can, um, when you get a minute, take a look at the website and make appropriate quick, uh, corrections. Um, if you need to list, I, I can furnish. Uh, next thing is, I'm a little bit confused. <laughs> the lighthouse circle, traffic pattern, what legally should it be? All winter long, um, when I'm in the, the circle, I stop and let the other people go, then I go. But since summer's come along, I have people stopping there and trying to wave me on, and there's just a little bit of confusion, so I'm just uh, politely asking, what should I be doing when I'm within the, uh, the traffic circle of the lighthouse? What is the law? I'm sure there's 
a lawful way to go through the who has the right of way? That's my question. Close your eyes Chief, and hit the uh, gas. The, Chief Reed, do you want to? That's in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> That's in New Jersey. I, uh, I, I believe, I, this, this may just be anecdotal, but I believe there is a difference in the way um, people from New Jersey approach it and people from Pennsylvania. I think there's a, there is no, a difference. It's big truck rules. Yeah. And big I don't know truck. if you see that out there. I have a big I, truck. I, I think it's <laughs> New Jersey versus Brigantine because outside of the island, the person in the circle has the right of way. But here in Brigantine, it's the person coming into the circle who's given the right of way. So I, one, I, one way I think would be just to put yield signs up instead of the stop signs, and that might clarify it, but it's, it's like parking on the other side of the street. It's a tradition. Engineer, and they're actually looking at the uh, circle signs, painting um, the lines. To, they're trying to enter at your own risk. <laughs> so they are they are looking at it. Big truck rule. Yes, but I, John, there is confusion here. But the, the interesting thing is, Chief, um, and and as we've looked at the circle over the years, and there are plans that have been developed for um, controlling traffic in that area. As chaotic as it looks, I, I, I'm uh, fortunately you don't, have too many you, don't, you don't have many accidents down there. Thank you know, really thankfully, true. thank God we don't. But it, you yeah. bring up a good point. It's another well, it mayor. I, I give people, God. God. <laughs> mayor. I give people um, looking at me, yelling at me, giving me dirty looks and whatnot because I'm supposed to go through. They're slowing down to give me the. They're slowing down to give me the right away, and I just don't know oh, what, you, what I'm you, supposed to do. So thing. I was asking for You're some suffering. assistance. I was asking for <laughs> assistance. I had been to a council meeting about two years ago and uh, requested a signage. I understand it is a county road. Mm -hmm. And asking signage of, of the arrows, especially if you're coming into town and you want to get on Bayshore, uh, that, 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 that lane right next to the curb, you have the outer lane also coming around because they think you're going to go around the circle and you have that outer lane. I almost had some fun uh, fender bumpers. Uh, both lanes trying to get to Bayshore Avenue. So I don't know if the county can produce a sign with the lighthouse on it showing the traffic pattern, but uh, uh, it, I just every once in a while have difficulty I'd, getting I'd like through that. I'd like to see that sign. It would be an interesting read, but let's, let's give it a shot. If we can request, yep. request that from the county. <laughs> the the uh, last thing I have tonight uh, is, again, I realize that this council has been very busy uh, the first half of this year. Um, but just let me say, I really like, I really appreciate when um, council has presentations at the beginning of the meetings. Um, there's a lot of service organizations in town, there's veterans organizations, and especially with the children um, at, at, at our schools. Um, the the five-minute presentations in the, in the beginning of the meetings, they really set the tone for the meeting. Uh, I do remember when they, they happened in the past, I think they offered um, great meetings throughout the night, set the tone, and, and whenever possible, um, can we continue to have one of those in the future? Thank you. Thank you, John. Any other public comment? Very good. I'm going to close the public portion at this time. Um, any council comments? Uh, yeah, there's three things I wanted to touch on. Uh, let me start with what was going to be my last point as a follow up to our discussion on the uh, Blues Brews Barbecues event. I abstained when the matter was before council because Mike Feely had asked me to do some legal work for the foundation, which I was happy to do, and didn't feel that at that point I could be taking any official action, uh, which as it turns out, we took no official action anyway. And I wasn't part of the many meetings that were described or the conversations that took place between city officials, Mike Feely, members of his committee. I'm not commenting on them. My only conversations were with Mike at different times, and I had one conversation with Chief Reed about the limited issue of beer sales. And you know, I think Chief Reed had uh, a reasonable position on that, so I don't put any portion of the failure of the event from my perspective. Chief Reed of the Police Department, nor do I put it on Mike Feely. I understood, and maybe because I was involved with him a little bit more, I don't know, I thought all of council understood that 
there was a deadline, a practical deadline, even if it wasn't a hard and fast deadline of June 1st, there's a certain amount of lead time required to book that number of acts and to take care of all the other myriad details that would have to be coordinated. August 18th could never have been the only drop dead date. We all say that we supported the event and we're all did everything we could. I don't know. I guess we'd each have to look inside ourselves to decide if that was the case. I do know, based on the subjects that were discussed publicly at council meetings touching on that event, uh, Mike would not be unreasonable in thinking that perhaps he didn't have the city's full support. And it feels to me, again, not being part of the conversations that, that took place more recently, but having looked back on it now from the remove of a couple of weeks and having been here for the conversations and the actions that happened at council, uh, it does take on something of the feel of death by a thousand cuts. The discussions always seem to be about what more demands can we put on this event. We talked about reimbursement. The subject of reimbursement for city personnel and city expenses came up again and again. Not unreasonable. I was the person who first started that conversation because we apparently had no policy in place ever to get reimbursed for our police and sometimes fire and sometimes lifeguard expenses occasioned by events. That conversation happened a couple years ago in the context of the polar bear plunge. Council as a body then and now really didn't want to engage that discussion and certainly didn't want to talk about imposing the full responsibility for reimbursement of actual costs, much less discussion about staffing levels to cover that event. And, and I'm not saying that's unreasonable. You know, City Council might very well adopt a policy that you know, we would eat some or all of the costs on all events of this type. But for this event, the Blues event, from day one, the discussion was always premised on full reimbursement for everything, and then it just became a question of arguing or discussing staffing. Somebody got up here at that last meeting from the public and talked about a reimbursement by the event or by the foundation for legal costs. When do we ever do that to anybody? At that very same meeting, we approved a bill list where there were legal costs for work done on the golf course subcontract for food and beverage. I don't suppose anybody up here is in favor of charging that back against Meadowbrook or against the food and beverage operator. I mean, that was absolutely something that had never been talked about before. How many times were there discussions about you have to be sure to meet with the neighbors and clear it with the neighbors? Way too many times. One time is enough. There were discussions at different times about, well, what's the nature of the notification going to be? Are you going to go door to door? Are you going to send certified mailings? I mean, a level of overkill that we have never, never imposed on any <coughs> event or any project in this town, in my memory, not just the time I've been up here. There was talk another time about how much money and when is the foundation going to establish the escrow against the anticipated costs, the reimbursement costs for personnel and other city costs. Again, never has any event been asked to escrow money. So again, I don't know what's in anyone's heart. I can comment only on what I saw over many months of discussions here and what I know from, from talking to Mike and a couple other conversations. And there's a lot of questions. Uh, the way we approach this, I mean, was it that Mike Feely didn't deserve the slack. Let's not forget, and I'm, I'm kind of glad he left because he'd be embarrassed if he was still here, but this needs to be said. Mike Feely, as we all know, because he did meet individually with us all, and he met with council back in 2014 and sat down with me personally for several hours to describe what was, by any objective standard, an extremely well-planned and well-thought-out event. He put in I don't know how many hours. He knows what he's talking about. He did not just the due diligence, he went beyond that. This was and should have been a real event, and he knew, he knows what he's talking about. We overlooked the fact, it seems to me, that if anybody was going to be given some slack, if you're going to bend over backwards for anybody, maybe it should be the guy to whom we entrusted running our community center after Hurricane Sandy. He stepped up for that, 
He's volunteered for I don't know how many things through the years in this town, and as he points out, apparently without regrets, he doesn't get paid for that. I don't think we did right by Mike Feely. That's how it feels to me. And one final thing, there was a comment made at the last meeting, and it was by Andy. Andy, in response to something was said by a member of the public, Andy said something, I'm paraphrasing, I'm just concerned with making sure that the money raised by the event goes to the scholarships. I mean, why would you say that? Why would you even suggest that that should be on anybody's radar or a thought in anybody's mind that there might not be? a 100% allocation of the money that would have been raised by the event to the state of purpose. Why would you say that? Words have impact. You can't have a throwaway comment like that without planting the seed, and, and I think you know this, planting the seed in people's minds who don't know the background and don't know the players, that, oh, well, maybe there's a concern. Maybe there's a concern that this event isn't all that it's being promoted to be. I, I am absolutely disappointed uh, and shocked that, that you would have said that, Andy, at that meeting. So that's my opinion on the event, and I am very, very disappointed to see that it's not going to happen. The two other things I wanted to touch on. Well, can we? I, I do. We well, let me finish, and then you, if you want to comment on anything on the, I say. Uh, blues, bruising. That I am finished with. Oh. I do have two other things I wanted to say, and then if you wish to comment on any of my comments, feel free. Uh, I want to note the, I don't know if this was noted during tonight's meeting, that the Clean Communities is sponsoring a beach cleanup, I believe, this Saturday at uh, 16th Street and Ocean Avenue at the parking lot between 9 and 12. Uh, I know it may seem like we do a lot of beach cleanups and there's a lot of different groups that do beach cleanups. It'd be great and I hope we reach a day when we don't have to do beach cleanups anymore and John does, John Doring doesn't have to assign people to get down and rake the beach every morning and pick stuff up and empty overflowing trash cans. Sadly, we are not there. Uh, anybody who can just give even a little bit of time to that. Clean Communities does a tremendous job and you know, there's great satisfaction in whatever little bit of trash you can remove from whatever section of beach you choose to work on. Um, final point. Alfred Mungujakisa is moving to Haddon Heights. That may not mean much with that name, but if you know him as Father Al, uh, we in St. Thomas Church have gotten the uh, unhappy news that Father Al has been transferred, effective the end of this month, to uh, St. Rose of Lima, I believe it is, in Haddon Heights. That's a loss, certainly, to St. Thomas Parish, and to those of us who, who know Father Allen have worked with him in different capacities, uh, you could not find, you can't find a person who is more open, who's a happier, more spiritual person. Uh, and I mention this not just for personal reasons or for the interest of you know, those of us who are members of the parish, but because Father Al was a blessing and is still a blessing for another 10 days uh, to the whole community of Brigantine. You know, whether you, it was at a community event when Father Al was there, whether he was appearing at uh, you know, some official function giving the blessing, whether he's just out riding his bike or you know, socializing with the people down in Sterling Place, every single day he spread happiness and blessing. And if you know the background from which he came in Uganda, which was just poverty of a type uh, and hardship of a type we can't begin to imagine in Brigantine, and that during his eight years here, as he's trying to minister to the spiritual and the emotional needs of the people that he's working for, back in Uganda, members of his own family are dying of starvation. That's the kind of person he is. That's how strong and how spiritual he is. We are going to be so much the poorer for losing him, but we do have him for another 10 days. If you see him in that period of time, just thank him for his service. Thank, well, you, Rick, thank you, Rick. And, uh, um, I, I mean, one, one point I, I, you and I are in total agreement on is the, uh, the service of Father Al, and he certainly will be sorely missed. And I, I want to thank you for, uh, for those comments. Rick, back in uh, 2013 or 14, when the public safety director, Dan Howard, wanted to charge the um, polar bear's plunge 
for the services of the police, fire, and whoever. And it came in front of the council. And I think we all agreed at that time, and I'm not putting words in your mouth or anybody else's mouth here, if it was for a charity event that we would not charge police, fire, or um, public works. So I think my comment was, if Mike, Mike Feely's the one who raised his hand and said, all expenses will be paid by the, his charter. That's what, and I want to know where the money was going to. What were we raising money for to allow people to go onto the beach, drink on the beach where we're supposed to have 3,000 people. I was one of the main guys who was supporting. I was writing a check at that time. He came to me just like he came to the rest of the council. We sat down and when it started getting my name onto ABC licensing, I said, I better check with my attorneys. Good advice, right? Right, Rick? Well, check with your attorneys. I, I got a multi-million dollar company over in Northfield uh, sells liquor. I have a liquor license. I call Mr. Cerny. He says, you should talk to your ABC attorney. I call the ABC attorney. He says, under my advice, you shouldn't get involved. I mentioned to Mr. Feely, I couldn't be involved because my liquor license, just in case something happened, God forbid. And uh, so I wasn't willing to risk my business or my liquor license at that time. But in no point, in no way, that I was not in favor of Mr. Feely doing the blues, brews, and barbecue. Uh, I, I was going to attend. We kid around about it. Uh, I'm sure, you know, the big German next to me, he was going to attend with me, and we are going to have a couple beers and, and listen to some good music and stuff like that. But there is no way, and I don't believe anybody on this council, or Mr. Stinson, or Mr. Cerny, or anyone that over here, or anybody didn't want this thing to go through. But as you keep on reminding us every time, we got to do things right. And I, like I told Mr. Feely, when we approved that that night, there was no, nobody wouldn't believe that we wouldn't, didn't allow him to go ahead and put alcohol or, or beer or craft beer on, on the beach for service that night. <coughs> Our chief and his, his squad came up with uh, saying, hey, we have an ordinance against it. Okay, some paperwork has to be cleaned up. Um, again, I'm not throwing Mr. Cerny under the bus or anything like that. I was there in Ed's office. Ed pleaded with him for a half an hour talking to Mr. Cerny. He said, well, let's just wait till I get back. We'll clean it all up. And I set up a meeting. Mar uh, Murray Sacco was there with Ed, with Mr. Cerny when he came back off vacation. So in no way, no way, Andy Simpson, Councilman uh, Sierra, Bew, Mayor Gunther, or any one of the Democrats, I don't believe, had no intention of not voting yes to allow drinking on the beach for that one night. So um, to come out and say we somebody's against him is ridiculous and it's utterly absurd. Rick, Rick, I you know I appreciate you. You worked um, behind the scenes and, and did the legal work um, for Mr. Feely and the foundation. I did attend several meetings, and, and I know um, first of all the work that Mike Feely did. I know the members of his committee who were all well intentioned, and I'm aware of the hours that the, uh, the police department put in. Um, I did attend a meeting where we we sat. Um, in the meeting and, and reviewed the plan that was uh, provided by the police department. And um, the police department has a job to do. They make recommendations. If something goes uh, bad, it's on them. And if there is an issue, they're the ones who have to answer for it. So I, along with Councilman Simpson, would not, would not ask the, the police chief to change any of the decisions that he made because it's his job, it's his responsibility. First of all, I wouldn't do that on a personal level. And secondly, on a legal level, you know that I can't. But along with that, I think what, what happened here is that we went from a situation where a 
events were approved, sometimes by one individual with no input from council, events that could have had the city um, facing some extraordinary, uh, I, I think, um, vulnerability in terms of liability uh, were, were out there. Um, they were forced on us at the last minute. I had conversations with Fred Cerny one Friday night, I guess into Saturday the next day, trying to uh, get an event approved that people thought they were coming to Brigantine for that had never been approved by this body. We as a body said we need to formalize this process. So my feeling is the first event that went through a, a more formal process to get approved. And it is the first event of its type in the city of Brigantine. We're not Atlantic City. We don't do these events uh, every year. So it probably went through perhaps a more thorough review. But I, I, I don't question the motivation of anyone, anyone in the administration, the city manager, the city attorney, police chief, John Doring, fire department, everyone on this side of the dais. I don't question anyone's motivation to wanting this thing to be a success. I think what we, we saw was people doing their job and protecting the interests of, of the city of Brigantine. So, you know, I, I know you may have a more negative view, which is shocking um, that you do, but I think it's unfair to, to the people involved and, and to everyone who tried to make this happen. It's, it's no one's fault, as far as I'm concerned, on, this, on the city's part. And quite frankly, I think there's plenty of time for, for this thing to come together. I don't know what their timelines are, but um, it could have happened. And what we're talking about is the difference of a week um, in the process. So, and Mr. Cerny, I don't know, you know, you, uh, you and I never had a conversation about it. The last thing I saw was an agenda with a resolution on there. I didn't see an agenda. I thought the agenda, uh, resolution was going to be on there um, as of Friday morning, and it wasn't. But, you know, I know you had some legal concerns, and they would have been cleared up by now. The answer is yes, they would have been cleared up before now. Well, just to take a, well, let me try to keep this short because it's, it is not a short answer. It is a very long answer in terms of what needs to happen to take this event from all the goodwill and all the good work that everybody did and turn it into an event where everybody knows what is going on. If you look at the resolution that this council passed, it authorized the manager to negotiate an agreement. My understanding is those negotiations were going on, but we never got to the point of the agreement. My conversation with Ed on Friday, June 5, was let's have a meeting on Thursday. Bring in all of our team and, and let's talk about where we are. Let's spend an hour together. Bring Mike in after that so we can share where we are and we'll get this thing locked down. As to the specifics of that week, I saw a resolution that the clerk took a shot at, neat, clean resolution saying, we are waiving the prohibition for alcohol on the beach. I looked at it and I said, no, that is not what we're doing. Straight on, drop dead, that's not what we're doing. We are waiving a, that prohibition to the extent that we are going to have a licensed facility as part of an event that is serving beer. And the service of that beer is going to be under considerable restrictions which had been negotiated with the police department. The resolution as it was presented to me was simply incorrect. And once you start down the line of the ABC and the enforcement powers of the police department, it becomes a substantial discussion. And I just wanted the time to have that discussion, to put that resolution in the form that it should have been in. That was what was happening in the conversation with Ed on that Friday, combined with let's all get together and sit down and try to work it out. Public Works is praised by Mike, and rightfully so. During this entire process, Public Works has never gotten a writing from Mike. Okay, that needed to be taken care of. I spoke with John after I got back. John never received a conceptual plan of the layout of the beach. Okay, it can be corrected. Everybody's working hard, but you're in the process of doing that work. Why does he need the concept plan? Well, some oddball questions. 
How are you going to power this thing? Is it electric? Where are the wires running? Is it not electric? Is it generators? Where are the generators? Did the generators need to be fueled on the beach? How are you going to accomplish that? The kinds of things you have to talk about and get into the agreement. Public sanitation. Who's the company that's delivering the port johns How many? When are they coming in? What access to the beach do they need? When are they going out? How do you control the site? Are you going to put up fencing in and around the spectator area so that only your paid spectators are there? Any number of questions like this need to be dealt with, and especially in the alcohol. You had a conversation here in this room tonight about bartenders. Who are the bartenders going to be? I'm sure there's an answer to that. Did they have the training that you discussed here tonight? These are all legitimate things that need to be discussed. And when you back into that one resolution and the alcohol piece, it has to be understood, it has to be folded in. And all that could have been accomplished within seven days of my conversation with Ed when I was saying, don't go forward tomorrow. I mean, that's, uh, I'm sorry, they got a little longer than I intended, but when you, when you run this kind of event, it's not done on conversation. And by the way, when I was having that conversation with Ed, in my mind, it was an eight to 10,000 spectator event because when this was first presented in this room, it was an eight to 10,000 spectator event. I don't know when it became 3,000. Okay, it did. But that was not the dynamic that I was dealing with because that was not the initial representation. It's still the same questions. Right? Same, same questions, just a little bit smaller. But you know, and you've got to get this to writing. You need an agreement so that these gentlemen know what they're doing, so that Mike knows what he's doing and knows what to expect from the municipality. He made the representation about the police department. It's a moving target. Okay, some frustration, understood. It shouldn't be a moving target, and if we work together, it's not going to be a moving target. Bring me back into the room, I'll, I'll work it so the target doesn't move anymore. I think we I never got to that point. I think if there's any take home from this, it's that when this happens again in the future, that we have some type of basic framework in place so that there's plenty of communication, expectations are known from the get-go. If we just forget about all the details that we talked about tonight and how this went down, we'll never be able to have another event like this because people will be dis discussed before it starts. Uh, I think the part of the thing is we've gotten into a situation where blame is being, has been thrown around. And um, I think that's where you know, so much of the friction um, has resulted. And it's unfortunate the whole, that there hasn't been more flexibility so that the, the event could possibly be resurrected and move forward. But we are where we are. As long as we don't forget that this happened so that it doesn't happen again, <coughs> I think we're at least partially on the right track. Um, <coughs> I'd like to say a few words. I'm very disappointed, and I know a lot of other people, <clears throat> a lot of other people are disappointed. There's a lot of work that goes into planning an event like that, and uh, it's not easy, and he had a lot of people involved, a lot of hours. I want to personally thank the Blues Foundation for all their hard work on this project. And uh, I know they're very disappointed. You know, working on a big event, rounding up volunteers, it takes a lot of time, and their heart was in it. They, their intentions were good. And um, I just hope that good does come from this, like Joe said, that maybe next time we could streamline it and, and learn from this so that this doesn't happen again because I think people were very excited about having another new event on the island. So uh, personally, I'd like to apologize and thank the Blues Foundation for all their work. I was also looking forward to it, and hopefully maybe next year things can get rolling again. I'd also like to say, uh, Rick, on what you were saying about Father Al, I'm sorry to hear that. But not only is St. Thomas losing a great guy, the <coughs> Sterling Place neighborhood is losing a great guy every day when I'm outside, he's either riding by and waving or riding his bike with a little helmet on, waving. We'll be sad to see him lose. 
to uh, lose him in our neighborhood. I'd also like to compliment the Elks Lodge for their wonderful presentation uh, this past Sunday on Flag Day. It was very moving and enlightening, very educational uh, ceremony presented by the officers of the Elks. And also to mention that Mr. Reed from North School, the choir director, was there with many members of the, the middle school choir who sang the national anthem and then also a medley of uh, patriotic songs. It was just a really wonderful moving event. Thank you, Karen. Um, one comment I want to add to, and I took some time to, to think about this. You know, and one of the things that I guess bothers me and upsets me is that uh, I feel like there's a lot of times that people take opportunities to politicize events. You know, you look at the Blues, Brews, and Barbecue event, and there was a lot of goodwill put into that. And it's something that a lot of people wanted to see go forward. You know, and it's unfortunate that we're at a point where it isn't going forward. I still believe that this event can be resurrected. I do believe it can be moved forward. But I, I really think we got to take caution when we use goodwill events like this and turn it into something that it's not. When people try to grandstand on this event and divide the community, we can't continuously divide our people. We can't perpetuate this ill will. It's not good for anybody. It's something, and this is me speaking on my own, but it's something that needs to stop. You know, it's unfortunate that we couldn't go forward. People worked very, very hard to try to make this happen, and it didn't happen. But that should not open the door to try to take advantage or to try to cause ill will. It's something that I think we need to do to hold ourselves to a higher standard. Any other council comments? Good night. Okay. <laughs> Seeing none, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Once again, I want to thank everyone for coming this evening and participating in our council meeting and thank uh, everyone who is watching at home. Have a good night and thank you for tuning in to your council at work.